Hey there guys, welcome to part one of my ultimate hard space shipbreaker guide. Today I'm going to be walking you guys through everything that you need to know to be able to efficiently complete your first few standard career mode work orders. Now you might have already gone through the tutorial and even might have a few hours of playtime already under your belt. But if you're anything like me, you were probably a bit overwhelmed by everything on your first few playthroughs and missed a ton of details. Let's work through the first work order now, and along the way, I'm going to be sure to point out all of the important details, you know, tips and tricks I wish that I knew when I first started. I'm going to be leaving out lots of the obvious bits that you probably already know. I'm going to be introducing relevant mechanics as the need to understand them arises. So if I don't immediately talk about certain features, skills, HUD elements, or anything like that, don't worry. I'll likely cover it later when it becomes more important. All right, let's get to cutting, shall we? First things first, let's get familiar with our work environment, the salvage bay, and everything located inside of it. Knowing what everything around you is and does is going to be super important, and there are six primary features that we should be aware of. The master jack, the ship itself, the barge, the processor, the furnace, and the jacks. The master jack contains your habitation module, a platform outside the hab, and a computer terminal that allows you to purchase consumables you'll need on the job. More on that later. The ship is, well, the ship you chose to work on for your current salvage job. It's going to remain here in whatever state you left it each day until you're done working on it and choose another ship, discarding any of the remaining elements. The barge is that big green rectangular apparatus located directly underneath the ship. The barge's primary purpose is to be your repository for many of the elements of the ship that will be presumably reused again elsewhere as is, such as seats, computer terminals, nuclear reactors, etc. How do you know what goes where? Don't worry, I'll get to that. One thing of note here with the barge that many folks don't realize is that it contains a limited number of slots. So if you toss an item into the barge but it lands where another item already is, the item will not be collected and instead can bounce off of an existing item, potentially sending those valuable items off to burn up in the atmosphere or smash into a satellite or something. Pay attention to where you're throwing or placing your items on the barge and you should be fine. Almost completely surrounding your ship, the salvage bay contains two pairs of openings, each with a blue portal and a red portal. The big blue portal here is the processor, and its job is to collect intact pieces of raw materials, like nanocarbon panels that surround the ship, doors, fuel pipes, things like that, to essentially be recycled and reused later. Now adjacent to the processor is the furnace, which as you likely guessed is used to dispose of the remaining raw materials, damaged objects, and other junk or scrap from the ship. So a couple more notes on these two salvage bay elements. First, you're gonna be compensated for all of the items that you put into the processor in the furnace based on their mass, which is measured in kilograms. Now, depending on the material and the mass of that object, you're gonna be paid different amounts. Secondly, these portals are essentially gravity wells, meaning that anything that drifts close to them will be sucked towards them at an increasing rate. With that in mind, if any items make their way into the processor or furnace that were not intended for it, those items will be destroyed, and yes, that includes you. You're going to lose any value you would have otherwise gained from salvaging that item, and your employer will generally say something rather rude and degrading upon each offense. Now, there's no difference between the different processors and furnaces on either side of the ship. They're basically there for convenience purposes. Now, finally, the last important element of the salvage bay work area are these big floating yellow bits named jacks. Presumably after the old kids game that I'm now realizing few people watching this video have probably heard of. Man, I'm getting old. Anyway, the purpose of the jacks are to serve as stationary anchor points for you to mount, tether, or grapple onto. Now, Given the nature of working in a zero-g environment, moving yourself and the stuff around you can be quite difficult at times. So having immovable anchor points above, behind, and in the different corners around you gives you some more options and flexibility so that you can mount things to them, pull things off in specific directions, preventing you from throwing bits of the ship into the wrong portal or off into an unintentional low earth orbit. As far as I know, there's currently no way to actually move, damage, or destroy these things. So use them whenever you can. All right, guys, now that we know everything important about our work area, let's jump into the salvage job. You're going to start each workday floating above the platform on the master jack. Let's go ahead and float over towards the ship. As we make our way over, uh, take note of these two groups of UI elements up at the top of the screen. 
The first is the ship information summary, which will show you the name of the ship, the type of the ship, and it will give you a progress bar showing you the total mass remaining in the salvage job. In the upper right hand corner, you will see a timer that will be ticking down from 15 minutes. This is your shift timer, which tells you how much time you have left in your shift before you'll need to pack things up for the day and, uh, you know, start again tomorrow. Alrighty, so at this point, you're probably thinking, well, where the hell do I start? There's a million things going on right now, and there's a million ways you can approach this. But a good starting point would be to hit the tab button, which will bring up your work order, which gives you kind of a, you know, a bullet list of the major, um, you know, high level goals that you want to achieve on this salvage job. So just doing a quick, you know, cursory glance over the, uh, the work order, we can see that the last item is salvage antenna. Well, the antenna are, at least right now, always located on the outside of the ship. So let's go ahead and start with that last one. One of the first things I want you guys to notice is this little animation surrounding your crosshair. Uh, these little arrows pointing outwards indicate to you that the item that you uh, can grab onto is essentially removable. You can grab it and pull it off without needing to cut anything. So, you know, that's super relevant for this case here because we can just grab this antenna, throw it where it needs to go. All right, so there's a few different uh, mechanics that I want to discuss here having to do with the grapple and items that you are grappled onto. So as you're moving through the environment and, you know, the three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, uh, your motion is going to be transferred directly onto the item that you have grappled. Now, there's a little bit of a lag um, because it's not a solid object that is connecting you. You know, it's not a metal rod. It's, uh, you know, this futuristic laser tech grapple thing. So you can kind of think of it almost like a balloon, um, you know, on the end of a string. When you pull, it is going to kind of lag behind, and then, you know, once it comes back over, it's going to overshoot a little bit, and then, you know, eventually it'll kind of hit an equilibrium to where it is, you know, directly out um, in, in the case of a balloon upwards. Uh, but in the case of the, the grapple, it will essentially just be a straight line out, you know, from the, uh, quote, barrel of the gun, I guess you could say. Now, the amount the object is going to be affected by all of your movements depends on the mass of that object relative to you. So something that's a lot bigger and a lot heavier is going to take a lot longer to sort of, uh, you know, catch up to you when you turn in different directions. And it's going to be a little bit harder to slow down. So keep that in mind. So right clicking while you're grappled to an object, um, you can think of it kind of like, you know, reeling in a winch. The, the noteworthy thing here is that how the objects in space move relative to each other depends on their relative masses. If the item you're grappled onto and reeling in is less mass than you overall, uh, then the item should be pulled towards you and your position likely won't change much at all. If the item that you are grappled onto and reeled into is much more massive than you, then the item will essentially remain exactly where it is in space and you will be pulling yourself towards that object. If you and the object that you are grappled to are around the same mass, then you can kind of think about it like you are both reeling yourselves towards each other um, and you'll effectively meet in the middle of where you were originally in space. All right, this is just going to be a little bit of a, uh, a side pro tip. Be careful when you're using the grapple. It seems like it's something that, you know, you have a lot of control over, but things can get out of hand really quickly when you're in space and your momentum adds up and the speed at which you're moving and different masses of objects are flying around you. Things can get a little hairy pretty quickly. So again, do everything slow, do everything steady, and just be careful. You don't want to end up like me. I just don't like that the... Why does it... Helmet damage detected. So not only do your movements up, down, left, and right get transferred to any items you're grappled to, but also any movements you make in terms of rotation as well as forward and backward. So this can be super helpful when you and the item you're grappled to are trying to make their way through the environment without damaging anything or smashing anything into something else. So I mentioned before how you need to be smart about how you interact with different objects based on their mass in the environment. You can't really make smart and informed decisions about, you know, what to do with these objects if you don't know their mass. Luckily for us, the developers have provided us with that information. If you take a look at the bottom, you know, center kind of right side of the screen, which I'll highlight right now, you can see there's two numbers here that are relevant. The bottom number in brackets is the mass of the object that you are highlighting with your crosshair. So if you take a look, I'm highlighting the glass right here. The glass piece itself is 111 kilograms total. And the number above it is the total mass of the entire entity that it is connected to, which in this case is the entire ship. 
So that means theoretically speaking, no matter what we hover over, we should be able to see the individual mass of the object, 780 kilograms in this case, and the total mass of the object that's connected to, i.e. the entire ship, is 33,649 kilograms. Technically speaking, because all of these objects are connected, the, the larger number up top won't really change. It should only be the smaller number in brackets underneath that will change. So following that logic through, if we were to grab onto an item that is separated from the ship itself, kind of move it out of the way here, we get a little bit of a clearer view. We can see that the, the chair is 15 kilograms and the total mass of the object that it's uh, you know connected to, which right now is just itself is 15 kilograms. So it makes sense that they would be the same number. So the final grapple mechanic that we'll cover right now before we move on is that you can press F when you're grappled onto an object and that will do essentially a force push, which again, physics applies here, masses apply here. If the item is more massive than you, you will be pushed backwards rather than the item being pushed forward. So again, keep that in mind. You can use that to your advantage or what's honestly much more likely is that you'll do it accidentally and you know, force push yourself backwards either into like the furnace or into the uh, the giant steel wall behind you. Helmet damaged and leaking. Consult your link employee handbook for repair procedure. So note here in the bottom center, in this uh, this little colored box here, there's different colors that correspond to the different objects um, in your environment that we talked about earlier. That indicates where the item is supposed to go, its intended destination. Now keep in mind that the object that you're inspecting here might say that it is you know, intended for the processor or the barge or whatever, but other things that are connected to it, like lights or computers or chairs or something, might be intended for another destination. So just keep that in mind so you don't like throw the whole massive chunk of a floor of a ship over into the incinerator when it's got potentially a bunch of expensive stuff attached to it. So as we force push the antenna that we grabbed earlier down into the barge and it lands in there, we can see the universal sign of good job uh, as you complete your first work order task. Congratulations. It only took learning like 27 discrete concepts to be able to fully grasp and understand this simple mechanic. Alrighty, so I think I'm going to call it there for now. Uh, this has already been a ton of detail about not that many things yet, but if you know me, you know I love getting into the thick of this stuff to really understand the mechanics and to teach it to you guys. On the next episode, we're going to be getting into the meat of the salvage job, getting into how you approach the salvage job from a high level, how to safely, effectively, and efficiently go about depressurizing, cutting, and tearing down the rest of the ship over the course of multiple workdays, and many of the important considerations therein. Future episodes are going to cover more advanced topics and concepts such as how to choose a ship for salvaging, the different certification levels, choosing and comparing item upgrades, and we'll even dive into doing cost-benefit analyses of salvaging certain items, attempting to figure out the most cost and time-efficient ways to tackle all of the different classes of ships to determine the optimal way to make the most amount of money with the least risk in the fastest amount of time so that you can pay off that billion in debt you started with. And to get you guys excited for the future, I'm going to leave you here with some gameplay footage from a higher level class ship salvage backed by an original song I composed in the same sort of style as the game soundtrack that I'm calling You Are My Son. Now I use the audio from one of the recovered data drive files, a poem read by Anastasia, as an inspiration. Dear Xavier, I wrote you a poem in your language. I hope you like. Sorry for a mistake. You are my sun, bright and center of my being, warm fire, always there and burn brightly. If you go away, I will die, cold and alone. Please do not be doing that. Love, Anastasia. I hope you enjoy. Let me know if you learned anything or if there's anything you want me to cover in the future, and I'll see you next time.